The accident occurred around midnight Saturday, sending a dozen construction workers scurrying for safety as a huge 1,000-foot section of the bridge shook, buckled, and then sagged, almost teeter-tottering on its support column. The damage was obvious. The affected section dipped at least five feet lower than the section which it was to be attached to. Meanwhile, a huge crack ran across the underside of the span 100 yards back. This $81 million bridge is the most expensive highway construction project ever undertaken in Michigan. Ten weeks behind schedule and millions of dollars over budget, the bridge has been plagued by construction snafus from the start, almost all of them related to design and specification shortcomings. Because of those problems, the state has had to double the weight of the girders. They had to reinforce the deck of the bridge, and one and a half million dollars extra had to be spent to reinforce inadequate pilings. Since this weekend's accident, state highway engineers have spent most of their time installing hydraulic jacks beneath the tottering section of bridge that was affected by the accident and surveying the extent of the damage. Today, those engineers pronounced the bridge stable. We have the design engineers studying it, making a design analysis, and uh, they will tell us uh, how to proceed from here. No one was injured. Uh, there was no uh, injury of any kind during the, uh, this trouble. The track record for concrete segmental bridges like this one has been poor and dangerous. Dozens of workmen have been killed around the world in the past few years during collapses of bridges like this. The most recent, just this past April in Indiana, when 12 workmen died in a construction collapse. Construction here, meanwhile, has been indefinitely delayed as engineers try and figure out the best way to repair the damage from this weekend's accident. Mike Wendland, News 4 in Zilwaukee. We have a consultant, the contractor has a consultant, uh, and uh, we, within uh, two or three weeks, should know a lot more than we do right now. So solemnly swear to tell the full truth and nothing but... The contractors repeated their charge that state inspectors slept on the job and falsified reports. Sleeping and watching TV on a project uh, is not usual. I'm not used to seeing that on a project site. Overseen. The bridge builders testified that most of the disputes involved money, not safety. Contractors also revealed that state officials temporarily shut down the project two weeks ago in a construction dispute. Transportation officials say that shows inspectors are doing their jobs. Our inspectors did what they should do. They were tough. And we want them to be tough. Um, uh, we don't want them to, to be flexible and uh, you know, making exceptions here and there. The builders told committee members that if they question the future safety of the public, they must also question the present safety of construction crews. I'm concerned about their safety right now, today. You know, and if, if there really is a question, you know, I have to question what I'm doing. 
you see. And uh, somewhere along the line, I feel we have to get off the dime and either do something about it or not. Federal officials gave Transportation Director James Pitts the authority to open the bridge, saying oh, no. the test showed it's as solid as a rock. And since the bridge is as solid as a rock, Jim Pitts and his four lovely children and wife are going to be the first ones to go over it on Wednesday afternoon about 12.30. For a while, it looked questionable whether anyone would ever drive over the Zawaki Bridge. Reports from outside engineers said the cables holding the segments together were rusted. Many of the concrete sections had cracked. Some critics suggested mothballing the bridge that made Zilwaukee famous. Put up a big sign uh, that basically uh, indicates it's a tourist attraction and see what we shouldn't have built. The focus should be public safety, and the focus should be uh, to give the, the Michigan public uh, the greatest assurance we can. The questions forced the U.S. General Accounting Office to investigate construction. A loaded truck weighing 260 tons put it to its toughest test. As the truck inched along, engineers measured to see how much the bridge gave under a weight three times the legal load limit. The bridge is in fact stiffer than was assumed in the design calculations. Is and therefore safer? Yes. The bridge that made Zilwaukee famous is now open for business. and People here hope that will be good for their business. It might, especially next year with the tourists. They'll want to see the bridge, and they might stop in to say hello. Her store is practically under the bridge. Every morning, folks get together here for coffee with a little chat. They talk proudly about the bridge, like it's part of the family, and they don't like anybody bad-mouthing it. And I think some of those critics should have stayed home and played with their marbles because they knew about as much as I bought that bridge as some of these idiots that we see running around here saying they'd never cross it. I told the man at Mackinac City that when he questioned the safety of our bridge, it would still be standing when his bridge had fallen in the water. The bridge has brought kind of mixed blessings to the town of Zilwaukee. Oh, it's provided some jobs and been the topic of endless conversations, but some of the people who've lived in this little town their entire lives say that it's unfairly given it a bad name. You never would have known it this afternoon, however. Drivers going north along I-75 got a smooth introduction to the bridge. People here now hope their town and their bridge have a smooth ride in the future. People know where Zawaki is now. We're going to try to capitalize on it. Now that the bridge is here and it's, uh, it's a good bridge, uh, there's uh, some potential for us, I think. The next chapter in the Zilwaukee saga will be written next summer when the southbound lanes open for traffic. Mike Lewis, News 4, Zilwaukee.